If you watch my channel, you know I review a lot of 2-in-1s and I inevitably always compare it to this, the Surface Pro line. And Microsoft released the Surface Pro a few years ago, updated it to the Surface Pro 2, the Surface Pro 3, things started to get interesting. Surface Pro 4, things really got interesting. And now they released the Surface Pro 2017. Rather than call it the Surface Pro 5, they just simply call it the Surface Pro. Now, unfortunately, I didn't review it until now, but I have to say it's one of the best in the business and for good reason, as it really is a premium two-in-one, excellent materials used, gorgeous pixel sense display, really everything you'd want in a two-in-one. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my take on the Surface Pro 2017. Let's find out if it's worth your money. I've got a lot of exciting things on the way to the studio, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. Now here's the deal, Microsoft's running a special right now at $799 for the Core i5 model. That's $200 off its normal price of $999. Throw in the Alcantara keyboard and the pen, you're looking at well over $1,000 even with that discount. But it is well worth it in my opinion as it has some of the premium specs you'd want in a 2-in-1. Now keep in mind for that $799 price you're getting only 4GB of RAM and a paltry 128GB of SSD storage. I recommend minimums of 8GB of RAM and 256GB of SSD storage. But keep in mind that will bump up the price. And now for late 2017 heading into 2018 you can now get the Surface Pro 2017 edition with LTE, something you couldn't get before, which for business users and those who are on the go will certainly like, I'm sure. Packaging is really premium, something we've come to expect with the Surface line, very high end, very classy. Now I purchased my unit directly from Microsoft and I actually picked it up at my local store here in Las Vegas. And opening the box you're greeted by the unit itself. Holding it you're reminded just how premium, how high end this device really is. You get some documentation and warranty information in the box. And you get a 44 watt charger. Now it also has an additional USB port to charge peripherals and things like your mobile phone and so forth. So it's a really nice touch that they do include that on the charger itself. Now as far as charging times and battery life we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And it still uses the Microsoft's proprietary connector, the Surface connector, instead of using the more common standard now heading into 2018 which would be USB Type-C. I'd like to see that change in the next iteration. Now opening the kickstand for the first time you realize this is an extremely sturdy well built hinge. It's a metal hinge and it should hold up over time when it goes through the rigors of everyday use. Now I opted for the signature Alcantara type cover. It's an additional $160 on top of the price you're already paying for the Surface Pro. Now that's not included in the price which is a bit of a shame as other devices that compete with the Surface Pro include the type cover and even the pen. I like the type cover, I like the look of this uh, Alcantara fabric, I like the feel of it. This is really an improved version over last year's Surface Pro 4 type cover. I think they've made a lot of the necessary improvements. And of course when you buy the Surface Pro I would recommend getting the new Surface Pen. Now this is a $99 accessory, it's no longer included in the box which is a bit of a shame but they did improve it to 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity. It still has a lot of that extra functionality you get via the Bluetooth, you have the eraser functionality on the top. We'll talk more about the pen in just a little bit. And of course you still connect it magnetically to the side of the device when you're not using it as there is no other way to store the device other than in your bag. Without a doubt the star of the show is its display. It's a 12.3 inch IPS pixel sense display with a resolution of 2736 by 1824. That's 267 pixels per inch and it has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. It covers the color gamut really well, 96% sRGB and 71% Adobe RGB. And it gets bright at 430 nits, making it good for both indoor and outdoor use. This is a very sharp display with very deep blacks and very vibrant colors. Now as far as ports are concerned, here's what you get. On the right side of the device you have your Surface connector, that's where you'll charge your device. You have a USB 3.0, it's type A, and you have your display port out. 
And on the left side, you have your 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and you also have the magnetic portion of the device where you'll attach your Surface Pen magnetically, of course. And lifting the kickstand reveals the micro SD card slot for storage expansion. On the top of the device, you have your power button along with your volume rocker up and down. And on the bottom, you have your connectors for your type cover. I really like the improved type cover. It's very sturdy to type on. It has 1.3 millimeters of key travel. It's pretty sturdy when it's on a typing angle. I really think this is a much improved type cover over the last version. Now I have the Alcantara Signature Edition and it has very good feel to it. It's almost like a cloth-like feel. It seems pretty durable and it's held up since the time I've had it. We'll see over time whether or not stains and, and so forth will be an issue. I don't think so. So far for me at least, it's working pretty well. And they improved the kickstand. Now it has a very sturdy hinge once again as it did in the Surface Pro 4 and before that. And it can now go down 165 degrees giving you even a lower profile than before. Now as far as the trackpad is concerned, I thought it worked okay. It can do two finger scrolling, Windows 10 gestures work well, uses precision drivers. Actually I thought it was okay. It's improved over the last iteration. It is kind of on the small side, but really not an issue for me. I think it worked okay. And I really like the improved pen. The new Surface Pen now has 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity. And it also supports a tilt function, so in programs like Photoshop, Digital artists will certainly appreciate that. And as far as taking notes in a meeting or in a classroom, this certainly is excellent. It feels very much like pen to paper now. I really like this improved Surface Pen. My only gripe is now that it costs $99 and they don't include it in the box anymore. Now I actually think Microsoft did a pretty nice job on the speakers, they're front facing, they have a pretty rich full sound and pretty good volume considering this is such a thin and light device, I think Microsoft did a good job. Now let's hear them in action. So this is the webcam on the Surface Pro. Now I'm purposely putting this in a room that is not perfectly lit. It's actually a dimly lit room and I think it's doing okay in a low light situation. I think I've seen worse obviously. This is a 1920 by 1080 30 frames per second webcam and I think it will certainly get the job done. If you need it for Skype, if you need it for video conferencing, it's certainly not bad. But I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the front-facing webcam on the Surface Pro 2017. And of course, it is a Windows Hello camera, so logging in has gotten really good on this device, much better than the Surface Pro 4 in the past. Microsoft's made a lot of improvements. Setup has been even easier. Very good face re facial recognition as far as logging in. Good job, Microsoft. Now there is a camera on the back. People don't take pictures with these two-in-ones with these tablets, but if you do, it's okay, nothing great. And the same goes for video. If you need it, it's there in a pinch, you can use it. Again, don't take pictures, don't take videos with your tablet. That's my PSA announcement for the week. Now as far as SSD used on the entry level Core i5, it is a Toshiba SSD. It did okay on the reads, not so great on the writes, a little bit disappointing on that write score. Now of course if you go to the Core i7 you will get better numbers, I'm pretty sure of that. Now as far as the Geekbench 4 test, it did a 6966 on the multi-core score and the single core score of 2809. And the built-in graphics did 16,931 on the OpenCL test of the Geekbench 4 test. And to put those numbers into perspective, the Surface Pro 2017 Core i7 got a 4671 on the single core score. Here's how it did against its competition. And here's how the Core i7 did on the multi-core score. Much better than the Core i5, and that's to be expected with the more robust, more powerful Core i7. 
Now, as far as gaming and processor intensive tasks, the graphics are built in, obviously, on the Core i5. You're not going to do it as great as you would on the Core i7. Again, neither one is a gaming machine, but you can do some gaming on medium to low settings, and it certainly is possible to play some of these games. But I wouldn't recommend this as a gaming machine. Go with a dedicated one if that's what you're into as far as what you're in the market for. Now, as far as radios are concerned, Bluetooth worked really well, repairing, reception, connecting to the device is actually no problem. As far as the dual band wireless AC, worked flawlessly, range and reception were excellent. The Surface Pro 2017 sports a 45 watt hour battery and it's definitely an improvement over last year's Surface Pro 4. On my AMD Tech Endurance test, which is a mixed use case scenario test at around 40% screen brightness, doing YouTube, Netflix, some light gaming, some light Photoshop, some light video editing, and some web browsing under the Edge browser, you're looking at anywhere from eight and a half to nine hours on that test. Now, please keep in mind your mileage may vary depending on the use case scenario at hand depends on what you're doing, so please bear that in mind. Now it has a 44 watt charger and it takes about two hours to go from zero to 100% to fully charge the device, which is okay, not great. Now as far as the battery life in terms of the Wi-Fi streaming test, it did 12 hours plus, which is very good, and look how it did against its competition. Again, much improved over the Surface Pro 4 from last year, a very good in terms of battery life as far as a thin and light 2-in-1 is concerned. And here's how it did against this competition on the notebook check test that they did. And I'm actually pretty impressed. Again, just to put this all into perspective, here are some of the numbers for you to mull over. Again, bottom line is this is a much improved battery over the Surface Pro 4. For those of you looking for the two-in-one, this will definitely be much better, much improved in the battery life department. Now, as far as thermals are concerned, here's a diagram from notebook check. I actually think Microsoft did a really good job in terms of cooling this system. And remember, the Core i5 doesn't have a fan which is even more impressive. So to bring it all home can I recommend the Surface Pro for 2017? Is it worth your hard-earned money? Answer is an absolute yes. This is the best two-in-one in my opinion of 2017 I've, and I've reviewed a lot of them as you know. It's got that brilliant display, improved battery, improved pen, very good audio, very good build and construction, everything you want in a thin and light tune one to take with you on the go for meetings and to take notes in class or anything you want to do with this device pretty much can do it pretty well if you know your limitations with a two in one. Of course, it's not perfect. There's no USB type C. The pen and type cover are separate buys, making this an expensive proposition when it's all said and done. But you can get it on sale. As I explained, you can get the entry level Core i5 for $799. But I recommend going with the higher end models if you want better performance performance, obviously. I'm going to give this a 91%. As far as the 2-in-1 is concerned, this is my AMD Tech Editor's Choice and my favorite pick of 2017 as far as a 2-in-1 Surface type device. So what do you think about the Surface Pro 2017? I like it. It's beautiful. I love that Alcantara keyboard. I love the fact that it has such great build construction. Love the display. Very high res. Beautiful pixel sense display, the 12.3 inch, one that we've all come to love. Uh, really, there is very little to not like about this. Right now, it's on sale at Microsoft. You can get the Core i5 version for $799. That's $200 off. That's a great price, in my opinion. Now, the things I'm not crazy about is the fact you have to buy the pen as a separate accessory. It's now $99, something they used to include in the box. Not anymore. And the co keyboard cover is expensive, especially if you want to get that Alcantara one. It costs an additional $30 over the previous version or the standard version. But those few negatives aside, I really love this machine. I think you should definitely get it with the eight gigabytes of RAM, not the four. For me, it was perfectly fine for the light stuff that I use this for. I'm not doing any video editing on this. I'm not doing any AAA gaming on this, but for something thin and light to take you with you on the go that has excellent build quality, beautiful display, really good audio, very good pen support, really works well, this uh, improved Surface Pen. I really do like it. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Yes, they can get expensive if you move up to the Core i7s. And again, those accessories do add up in the end. But you can get it again on sale for $7.99. I'll put the link below. At Microsoft, this is, I think, a good holiday sale price for this. You don't normally see this price. And so try to take advantage of it if you are in the market for a 2017 Surface Pro. 
So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.